Hey guys, how is everybody doing today? Um, so we only have two lectures left, this one and the one on Asian American literature, okay? Um, so I hope um, everyone's doing alright with their readings. Um, as you, as you can see for week six, I do not have a reader response to do because we are going to be talking about the final exam. Um, right now the final exam is still a work in progress, but I will have more information um, for you um, next video. Okay, it will probably be similar to the one that you had as a take home um, midterm, but obviously longer because it has to accrue, you have to, um, it has to count for a lot more points than just a simple. Um, take home. So I'm going to be working on that and hopefully for the next lecture I'll have a little bit more information for you all. Um, so for today we are tackling the racial experiences of children in the United States and I've chosen um, two works um, that I believe highlight um, this experience which is um, American Born Chinese by Jean Yang and um, The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi which you've heard me talk about before. Um, for next time, you are going to be reading Chinese American Readings, which is Maxine Hong, Hong Kingston's No Name Woman that is found in your textbook. And we have um, an excerpt from The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan that's found on Blackboard. They're really easy readings. I think you'll really enjoy them. Um, Maxine Hong Kingston talks a lot about the mysticism in Chinese literature and sort of how this mysticism has to be brought from the old country onto the new world. It's a really great story. And um, Amy, Amy Tan's um, Joy Luck Club is a great book. Um, it's one of my most favorite books. And we will be reading a very short chapter out of it. It took me forever to decide which one to do, but it's going to be that one. Okay. Crap. Um, so for today, like I said, you were to have read um, American Born Chinese and Absolutely part True Diary of a Part-Time Indian, but... Um, before we get started, I want to recommend this book to you all. I bought this book several weeks ago at my son's Scholastic Book Fair. Um, we go and we drop like, a ridiculous amount of money on books there. And I bought this one. The title is Other um, Words for Home. And it, this story is about a little girl who moves from Syria to the United States. And it's not told in what we would consider a normal... A normal narrative set. It's actually told. I don't know what that is. Um, it's told in poetry. So the entire story is told in little poems. So um, it's it's a different way of narrating the story. I loved the way it was written. It's written very simply. I ended up finishing it while we were in line to get into Walmart. So um, yeah, there you go. Um, it's really great. It talks really about what this little girl has to go through in learning English when she comes um, to the States from Syria and sort of the culture clash that she has, especially when she starts um, to wear hijab. But I recommend it. It's really fun to read. And it won the Newbery Honor Award, so you'll, you'll be reading um, award-winning literature if you choose it, okay? Um, I told my friend Mike, Michael Clary, the one who wrote... Um, the Regulators, remember? No, The Guardian. The, the book that I recommended the last time, it's The Guardian, right, Joe? Yes. Right, Guardian? The yeah. Guardian. Um, yeah, he thought it was funny that I recommended it to you also. Please, if you're so inclined, please go buy it. It's great. He, he, he loved it. He saw the video and he loved it. All right, so um, I did mention that this book was award-winning. Okay, the two books that we read for today are also award-winning. So the first one we're going to go over is American Born Chinese. I do not have a copy of this book. I don't know why. Okay, I don't have it. I guess it'll be on my Mother's Day book list or something that I need to have. I don't know why. It's, I'm ashamed. American Born Chinese was published in 2007. It won the Eisner Award, okay, which is a pretty big award for um, graphic novels to win. And as I've told you time and time again, um, without Mouse, I can guarantee you there probably would not be American Born Chinese. We wouldn't have Persepolis. Okay, so Mouse was a big deal, and this sort of goes into the vein with Mouse. Okay. This tells three stories. The first story is the story of, of the Monkey King. And the Monkey King is a very uh, important, very popular story in China. The second one is about Ying Wang. Um, he is an American uh, young boy who moves from San Francisco to this random Caucasian um, suburb. Okay. And, he tells, and we're going to talk about his story a little bit today. And the third one is the story of Chinky. 
Okay, and yes, Chinky, I know. I hope that you all were pretty uncomfortable reading that part. It is incredibly uncomfortable to read this part because um, Chinky, which is the third part of our reading for today, um, deals in the negative stereotypes that we've talked about. You know, we've talked about how damaging stereotypes can be. Okay, and I told you that um, the problem with stereotypes is that they're propagated enough times that suddenly it becomes truth. Um, and we're going to talk about stereotypes right now with China, with Chinese um, immigrants and of course Native Americans. But I have told you all that I have major, major issues with people um, being picked on or being bullied or just sort of joked upon um, via stereotypes. So for instance, um, I have a, I know somebody who mentioned the word, the term um, Indian giver in front of one of our relatives who happens to be native, okay, very awkward, very not not cool at all. Um, so I think um, the way that Alexi and the way that Yang really um, tackle these stereotypes, we kind of get to understand why they're so painful. And the fact that these deal with children, okay, I mean, as I've said, as adults, we're sort of supposed to, you know, just just kind of take it right I don't agree with it at all but to see children go through these I mean to be to see children affected by these stereotypes and being um, sort of told that they're nothing but lazy Indians or that um, Chi that's all Chinese eat dogs which is um, something that of course was made reference to in this sh in this um, portion of American born Chinese okay it's very painful for children children take things very literally and um, I've seen the the effect of it of these um, of this bullying so definitely this is something not to do but um, we're going to talk about why Yang decides to focus in on this near the negative stereotype of Chinese in the third part of his book but for now we're going to start with the second part there are three parts to American born Chinese okay they are in there okay, I freaked out because I couldn't find part three but part three is in there so please make sure you download the three of them for our read for your readings okay um I would like to say that I do apologize for the way that these readings are presented. The book that the library has is really damaged and you can tell that it's water damaged and whomever tried to fix it didn't do a proper job. Um, didn't do a proper job at it, but like I said, it's water damaged. It's really hard to fix water damage on a book. Um, my poor husband had to hold his hand down and have me take photographs around it. So yeah, hand out to Joe. He's the one who, who um, really helped me scan these pages. Okay, so let's look at part one of American Born Chinese. Okay, so we start off okay, with the story. We start off with this little boy being introduced to class, right? On the morning after we arrived, with the scent of our old home still lingering in my clothes, I was sent off to Mrs. Greeter's third grade at Mayflower Elementary School. Okay, so right now, right off the bat, Mayflower Elementary School. Okay, so this is something that's going to be, um, you know, more so leaning toward Caucasians because Mayflower, right? Pilgrims, Mayflower. Okay. Okay, we see that the, that the teacher, I like her outfit, says, Class, I'd like us to give a warm Mayflower welcome, Mayflower Elementary welcome to your new friend and classmate, Yin Yang. And the little boy says, Jin Wang. Jin Wang. Jin Wang. Okay. He and his family recently moved to our neighborhood all the way from China. And then he says, San Francisco. San Francisco. Okay, so right there, right off the bat, we see the teacher, I mean, first of all, completely massacring his first name and his last name, but also stating that obviously, I mean, if somebody who looks as if they are from Chinese, from, from Chinese descent, obviously they're coming from China to the United States, okay? And the kid's like, no, I'm coming from San Francisco. We know from our previous readings, right, that San Francisco has a huge Asian population. So, yeah, he came from San Francisco. Um, and that's, of course... The teacher is making these um, these assumptions, which makes it even more painful. Teachers aren't supposed to make these assumptions, right? We're supposed to know better. We see a little boy raise his hand and ask, "My mama says Chinese people eat dogs," okay, which is something that I think it's it's an idea, right? That yes, okay, um, not just Chinese, but um, other country, not just China, but other countries in Asia do eat dogs. Okay, I mean it's something they do. Okay, you can, I can go to India right now and tell them that, you know, they know we eat cows and they're completely horrified by it, okay? It's a different culture. Okay? Respect it. You may not agree with it, but, you know, we have to respect other cultures. Um, as I, I say this as my dog is right here. Hey, Leah. 
all right um so she says that and of course as a teacher and i've told you all that if those of you who want to become educators understand that part of your job is to be very um to to be very diplomatic and to have sort of be a buffer in between the students okay so sometimes when i see that my classes are getting too heated i kind of break up and say okay you know what time out we need to relax this is getting too heated what does the teacher say okay instead of saying no timmy please don't ask that she says now be nice to me i'm sure jim doesn't do doesn't do that in fact jim's family probably stopped that sort of thing as soon as they came to the United States okay so like I said okay you may not agree with them eating dog fine but don't don't talk about their culture as that sort of thing because they stop that sort of thing all right so that's what the teacher's saying and of course this little boy is up there Ian is up there and just listening to all this and taking this in. I mean, first days of class are scary enough as it is, but this is how he's being treated. And obviously, if this little boy brought up eating dogs in the schoolyard, that's suddenly true, right? He goes on to say right here, the only other Asian in my class was, was Susie Nakamura. When the class finally figured out that we weren't related, rumors began that Susie and I were arranged to be married on her 13th birthday. We avoided each other as much as possible. And Yang really likes to talk about this idea of isolating oneself. Okay, we'll talk about what Yang does later on when he isolates his, 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 himself from the, from the um, Taiwanese, um, Taiwanese student who comes to class, okay? But how sad that the two students, okay, Susie and Ying, who have so much in common, can't hang out together and can't be friends because there was a rumor started that they're going to be mar or they're going to be um, married on her 13th on the little girl's 13th birthday okay so that's an even bigger tragedy so um this story is very simple and the drawings are very simple but you can see like there's tragedy upon tragedy upon tragedy okay and that's very tragic when you can't be friends with somebody um somebody who'd be very close to you okay we're just gonna go ahead and go with the next panel um has the little children playing or playing hopscotch and um joe what's the name of that game that has the ball and it goes around on the pole oh tether ball tether ball okay they're playing tether ball oh my gosh tether ball hopscotch right they're playing tag and ying is all by himself he's sitting um, all alone eating lunch at the table and it's heartbreaking to see that okay children understand lon loneliness much more than adults do um by the time we're older yeah we kind of don't mind being very alone but children do not want to be alone and children understand what it's like to be alone they don't like to be alone okay um so to see this child sort of eating by himself is really difficult to see especially um because all of us, all 36 of you and myself, we've all felt alone at one point, especially as children. Um, and we understand how painful that is. Okay, so we see little boy, he's eating his, his food with his um, chopsticks. And, okay, the, the bullies come, right? What the hell is that? Dumplings? Stay away from my dog. Okay, that's, okay, yeah, because he's going to be eating your dog specifically. Okay, dude. All right, dude. Um, the other guy's like, hey, be cool, right? And, you know, just calm down. And he goes, um, they kind of start arguing within themselves. And they end up leaving um, Yang, by, Yang by himself, but not before. One of the students in the next page says, come on, let's leave Book Tooth alone so he can enjoy Lassie. Okay, again, very painful, okay? Um, some people may say, oh, that's just a joke. That's just a kid, kid saying something funny. It's not something funny. And... Where does this kid learn this? Okay, this kid doesn't learn it from himself. He learns it from listening to other people. Okay. Um, I know in my family there was this instance where um, someone used the N-word constantly in front of their kids. So what does the kid do? Use the N-word in class and the kid gets suspended. The parent gets called in. Okay, so it's an incredibly bad situation. But these kids learn this. Okay. They learn it not only from their parents, they learn it from television, they learn it from the internet. Um, so it's something that has to, we have to keep in mind when we see kids or when we start speaking in front of kids. These kids are sponges. They pick everything up and it's good or bad, they pick it up. Okay. My uh, five-year-old, who is right now hopefully asleep, won't stop saying, oh shit. Okay. Stuff spills. For example, corn. This corn spilled on the floor. What is he saying? Oh shit, the corn. Okay. Nonverbal saying, oh shit, the corn. So, there you go. Just remember that. Uh, that's my dog snoring, if you guys hear that. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, 
think so. Yeah, that's that's. Look, it's 11.56 at night, okay? The dog is asleep, but we are filming, right? Because it's the only time we can film with kids. All right, so we continue on, and look at the panel. Mm. Wait, this is just as the kids are leaving, and they're going to leave um, Ian alone. Look at the last panel of him sitting there. He's still sitting there. He's still holding his little chopsticks, but he looks absolutely defeated. He just looks horribly defeated. He looks so sad. And these panels just really get to me, okay? These panels break my heart every time I see them. Okay? We're nearly done with this part. So later on, he, you find out that he has a friend. Okay, that this is his friend. He makes his first friend named Peter Garbinski. He's a fifth grader, okay? So this guy looks pretty gross, actually, right? He tells him, oh, there, he tells him, um, what does he say? Give me your sandwich and I'll be your best friend. Otherwise, I'll kick you. I'll kick your butt and make you eat my burgers. My friendship with Peter developed quickly, and you can see that he has to give up his sandwich. So, quick question right here: You see that he went from having a bento box with dumplings, possibly other food, to having a sandwich. Um, for your discussion, I want you all to think about it if you choose to discuss this and think: Why would he suddenly have a sandwich? What happened to the dumplings? Okay, because between a sandwich and a dumpling. Nine times out of ten, I want those dumplings. I want the bento box. Um, why does he not have his bento box anymore? Why is he eating sandwiches now? Okay, that this ha this change happens very subtle, subtly. Uh, it's a subtle change, excuse me. But I still want to know why you guys think, why you all think that um that this is something that this is a change that occurs. Okay, so now he's eating his. Dumplings. Um, Ian says that they had a number of favorite games, and let's see their favorite games: Kill the Pill. Crack the whip, and let's be Jews. Okay, so those are three games that this, that this kid has, but um, Yin is sort of following along because this is his first friend. Okay, so the first person that pays any attention to him, um, other than the bullies, is this guy who is treating him absolutely horribly. We see it as an adult, but those of us who have been in the situation where sort of we don't have a friend, so we'll choose a random person, know that the desperation of saying, I have a friend, it doesn't matter how they treat me, I have a friend. This is kind of like the Bart Simpson um, Millhouse um, dynamic, okay? Just before winter break during my fifth grade year, Peter was in sixth, Peter told me that he was going to visit his father in Pennsylvania. The freaking government finally came to its freaking senses, he said. When winter, when winter break was over, Peter never came back. Okay, so he lost his... Oh, my God. Hang on. Oh, you scared her. Okay. Stop snoring. All right. Let's continue on. Um, I want you all to see that last um, panel, the one I just finished reading, with um, Ian is by himself, sitting again by himself at the lunch bench. Okay, I'm very sad, right? This experience that this kid is having... Okay, this, uh, and this sort of racial, almost racial hatred, maybe racial dysfunction does still occur right, occur right now. Okay, this is still going on right now. But I figured that maybe we could change, one of us could change this somehow. And y'all, this happens as adults too. Okay, I've seen this. This happens, this happens quite a bit with adults as well. All right, let's go ahead, go ahead and go to the second part. This one's shorter, okay. Two months later, Wei Chen arrived. Class, I'd like you, I'd, I'd like us to give a big Mayflower Elementary welcome to your new friend and classmate, Che Chen Chun. Wei Chen Soon. Wei Chen Soon. He and his family recently moved to our neighborhood all the way from China. Taiwan. Taiwan. Okay, right? So. Now we have a new, a new student, and he is actually much more othered than Jin was, right? Because Jin speaks English properly. He, he is from um, Chinatown in San Francisco, so he is much more um, inclined to understand the rules of the playground. Um, this young boy who just emigrated from Taiwan, probably not so much, okay? Wei Chen soon, he's going to have a more difficult time. Okay, so let's look at him. Um, look at what Ian, what Ian says. Something made me want to beat him up. 
And this is something else that I want y'all to think about. Why do you feel he wants to beat him up? What is it about Wei Chen that makes Yin uncomfortable? Think about that. Maybe another discussion. And I have my own reasons to think on why, but isn't it sad that sometimes um, those of us who are part of some sort of you know, racial group or whatever, we tend to be harder on, on our own group than others do. There seems to be some sort of internalized hate there. Um, for instance, I'm not going to get political about this, but for example, okay, I know a lot of Latinos who emigrate, who are first generation Americans, okay, or who weren't even born in this country, but now reside here, who have like this deep seated hatred for the immigrants who are trying to come in, to, who are trying to come to the States. Okay, so it's something similar to that, I think. All right, so let's see what happens to, um, Yin and his little, his new little friend. I'm sorry, they're not friends yet. Okay. Look at this this panel right here, the next panel where Yin is eating his sandwich and um, his little friend Wei Chen. Make sure I'm pronouncing his name properly, okay? Yeah, Wei Chen. So you see, Wei Chen um, is in the playground, right? And again, very there's this very sad moment um, where Yin is by himself. Okay, so how scary is this? Um, remember, if you're ever reading comics. Any any um, lines, lines, any sort of dialogue that is found between the two less than or equal, less than or greater than signs, okay, that's a different language. Okay, I should, probably should have made that clear at the beginning when I when I um, told you all to read this. But yeah, that's a different language. Okay, so when um, Wei Chen says sorry to bother you, but you're Chinese, aren't you? What is Yin said? You're in America. Speak English. All right. Obviously, this kid's from Taiwan. He might have spoken a little bit of English but not that much, okay, not to be comfortable. And look at the face of Wei Chen. He's like, uh, you, you Chinese person? Okay, obviously Yin speaks Chinese. Why wouldn't he just want to say, yes, I'm from China, I speak Chinese, can I help you with something? Why not? Why not just show that simple shred of decency? Okay, this kid is doing it, and please don't think that just because I'm pointing Yin out, um, doesn't mean only means that kids do this, adults will do this too. Okay, I'm not as fluent in French and Russian as I am in English and Spanish, but we've helped people. Okay, we helped a Belgian couple one time in downtown. We gave them directions, and I told them in, in French. It wasn't the best French, but I tried. Okay, I mean, it's just trying to help somebody, but this self-loathing that Yin has against his own culture is mirroring in his, um, at the beginning, of course, of his relationship with Wei, with, um, Wei Chen. Right? And you can see that Wei Chen is so uncomfortable, right? He's sweating, he doesn't quite, he wasn't prepared for this. I mean, he probably saw Yin and said, hey, it's my friend, and now it's not so much. Right? So, he, he continues, and, and, Wei Chen says, we, we be friend? And Yin, I have enough friends. Okay, very affected, right? Very much, very suave, very snobbish. Sorry, repeat please. Okay, I have enough friends. Who? Them. And he points out, okay, to the crowd of kids that had called him a dog eater and what, it had been really mean to him. And um, Wei Chen says, oh, all right. And again, we see Yin eating his um, his sandwich, and um, you notice that Wei Chen sits there. He doesn't have a lunch bag. Okay, um, I am not actually very familiar with Chinese um, schools. I'm not sure if they give food, but he doesn't have a lunch bag with him. You'll notice that it's just Yin who's eating his sandwich, and that's when um, Wei Chen brings out his little robot. Right? That was my son who just snored. Okay. <sighs> All right. All right. So I guess the last lecture. Let's uh, let's cut this off, and then we'll continue in the other one in the next video.